congrats on having an Ingersoll Rand air compressor. With a little bit of care and maintenance, you can ensure optimal performance. This video will help if your compressor isn't properly shutting off. To start, you're gonna need an adjustable wrench, combination wrench, both a flat and Phillips screwdriver, and thread tape or thread sealant. We'd also recommend safety glasses, cut-proof gloves, and steel-toed shoes while doing the job. And this process should take about 30 minutes or so. So the issue here can be the compressor runs and builds pressure, but then it doesn't shut off at 175 PSI, which is the maximum pressure for this model. When the compressor runs and the air pressure surpasses the cutout rate of 175 PSI, it's gonna to continue to build pressure until it blows the safety release valve that's near the pressure switch. The unit continues to run while all the extra pressure is purging through the safety valve. Now, don't worry. This is a good thing because it prevents overpressurization of the air tank. The first step is to check the pressure gauge to determine if your unit should be cycling. And this particular unit cycles between 135 and 175 PSI. Let the compressor cycle up to 175 PSI and watch for it to shut off at that point. If it doesn't shut off at 175 PSI, try to turn the unit off by switching the off auto switch on the starter box to the off position. If the unit shuts off, then the problem is most likely a malfunctioning pressure switch because the contacts inside are probably stuck together. One thing to note on this is that the compressor is still running after you attempt to turn it off at the starter box. The next step is to turn the power off to the unit from the electrical disconnect box. Now this is rare, but if this is the case, there may be a fault in the magnetic starter components and an electrical professional can test that out for you. A pretty common cause for the compressor running is a malfunctioning pressure switch. Check on this by first turning the power off to the unit from the electrical disconnect box. You're gonna to wanna to use the proper personal protective equipment and electrical safety protocol to remove the starter box cover and confirm there's no live power in the compressor. And you always have the option to work with a professional electrician if you aren't an expert. You remove the cover of the pressure switch by loosening the screw on the top of it. Make sure the wires are connected to the proper terminals, both line and motor, and check to see if the spring-loaded contacts are stuck together. The pressure switch contacts should be closed for the compressor to run. When the receiver tank sends the air signal that it's reached 175 PSI to the pressure switch, the contacts should snap open. This will cut the power to the electrical motor and shut off the compressor. There's a very thin coating on the face of these contacts. That coating is what prevents it from sticking. This coating can wear off. That can cause a welding effect and that can keep the contacts closed. If the contacts are stuck together, then the pressure switch is faulty and needs to be replaced. Make sure the compressor is turned off and disconnected from power and release the air pressure from the tank. Mark and remove the wires from the pressure switch terminals. Then remove the pressure gauge and safety relief valve using the right size wrenches. Loosen and remove the copper tube from the unloader valve on the side of the pressure switch. Grab a wrench again and remove the pressure switch from the tank stem by turning it counterclockwise. The part number for the pressure switch is located inside the cover. Double check they're using the correct replacement part since several pressure switch models look alike but have different functions. Apply thread sealant or Teflon tape to the tank stem that the new pressure switch threads to. Thread the part onto the tank stem and then use a wrench to tighten it firmly. Be sure that you're turning it by its base and not the top of the part. Be sure it lines up with the contacts facing forward. Then attach the copper unloader tube back on the valve on the side of the new pressure switch. Reinstall the pressure gauge and safety relief valve using thread sealant or Teflon tape and tighten it firmly. Last thing. Connect the electrical lines to the pressure switch as they come off the old part, the line, motor, and ground. There's a small plug on the back side of the pressure switch that may not be included with the new part. If you see an open threaded port on the rear of the new part, use the plug from the old pressure switch to fill the spot. Otherwise, air is gonna leak from this port when the pressure is going on. Check out connections and install the pressure switch cover. The unit is now ready to get back to work. Power it back on and go through the whole cycle of how you'd use it to make sure it works properly. Now, this particular procedure has to deal with compressors equipped with magnetic starter. For compressors that don't have one, incoming power is wired directly into the pressure switch and the off auto lever is attached to the side of the pressure switch. But for those without a mag starter, first thing to check is that the pressure switch is wired correctly with the line leads and ground going to their designated terminals on the part. After that, Check to see if the off auto lever fails to operate the unit correctly or the unit continues to run past the maximum rated pressure. If either of those issues happen, you need to replace the pressure switch following the instructions from earlier in this video. Last thing to remember, 
a pump up test should be done at the repair just to make sure the unit is working correctly. Now you're back to full power on your highly reliable and low maintenance air compressor from Ingersoll Rand, which delivers the right power for your project.